The Klondike Gold Rush is considered to be the last great gold rush, lasting for a few years in the late 1890s. The Klondike is an area of the Yukon Territory in northwestern Canada, located relatively close to the Alaskan border. The region is centered around the Klondike River, which enters the larger Yukon River at Dawson City. Most of the indigenous people in the region were aware that gold existed, but did not consider the metal to be valuable. American prospectors began to come into the area in the mid-1800s, and were able to make deals with the local Native American tribes, which opened routes for future settlement. Gold deposits were found along the Yukon River in 1883, and the 40 Mile River in 1886, with small amounts of miners working claims in these areas. The event that triggered the boom in prospecting was the discovery of huge quantities of gold by George Carmack along a tributary of the Klondike River called Bonanza Creek on August 16, 1896. After he registered the claims the next day, word spread quickly throughout the mining camps located in the Yukon River Valley. By the end of August, all the land along Bonanza Creek had been claimed by miners. A prospector explored further up one of the tributaries of Bonanza, later named El Dorado Creek, where the quantities of gold were even greater. Claims began to be sold there as well. However, the outside world was still generally not aware of these discoveries. The stampede truly began in the summer of 1897, when the first boats left the Klondike, carrying newly mined gold and tales of the riches. The height of the gold rush was from the summer of 1897 to the summer of 1898. It began on July 15th, 1897, when two ships returned to San Francisco and Seattle carrying prospectors from the Klondike, who brought an estimated $1.2 billion in gold among them. As a side note, all monetary values given in this video are approximately given in present day worth, not 1890s worth. The arrival of these prospectors drew a great deal of attention from the press. The US was suffering through a series of financial recessions and bank failures in the 1890s, and shortages of gold during this time meant that gold dollars were greatly increasing in value relative to paper currency. There was a great deal of unemployment and financial uncertainty in the country. The Klondike promised to fulfill both the need for gold in the nation and to provide financial security for individuals. In total, an estimated 100,000 people attempted to reach the Klondike gold fields, but only about 30,000 to 40,000 were actually able to. The Klondike could only be reached by following the Yukon River. In the summer, the river was navigable by boat, but travel in general was very difficult due to the mountainous terrain, winding and sometimes impassable rivers, and bitterly cold winters from October to June, where the temperatures could drop below negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Shortly after the stampede began, Canadian authorities mandated that anyone entering the Yukon Territory had to bring a year's supply of food, which usually weighed around 1,100 pounds. Besides this, travelers had to bring camping equipment, tools, and other essentials. Many used horses or other draft animals, or otherwise pulled sleds. It was possible for prospectors to sail all the way to the Klondike. From the Alaskan coast, a riverboat could be taken up the Yukon River to Dawson City, the main hub of the region. The advantage of this route was that even though it was long and expensive, it was quicker and safer than overland travel. More common paths were the routes from Dia and Skagway. Most prospectors landed at these towns on the coast of southeastern Alaska, where they would travel over mountain ranges into the Yukon Territory, and then down the river system to the Klondike. At the start of the stampede, a ticket from Seattle to Skagway cost $1,100 for a cabin on a steamship. Finally, prospectors could follow routes that stayed in Canada for the most part. These started from British Columbia or Edmonton, and were popular with British and Canadian miners. Of the estimated 30,000 to 40,000 people who reached the Klondike during the gold rush, only about 15,000 to 20,000 ended up prospecting. About 4,000 found gold, and only a few hundred became rich from the endeavor. Most of the Stampeders arrived in 1898, and by this point, the best creeks had all been claimed, including the Bonanza and El Dorado creeks mentioned before. The Klondike region was interspersed with veins of gold, which were forced to the surface by volcanic action. Rivers and streams then gradually wore away at these veins, leaving nuggets and gold dust behind. Some gold ores were located in creek beds, while others lay along the hilltops, left behind by older streams. Gold was unevenly distributed in the areas where it was found, which made prediction of good mining sites an uncertain act. The mining process began by clearing the ground of vegetation and debris. Miners then created prospect holes in order to try to find the ore. If these holes looked promising, then digging could commence, which had to go down to the bedrock, where most of the gold was found. A major challenge that the miners faced was that a layer of hard permafrost lay only six feet below the surface in the Klondike region. This could be excavated during the summer, but during colder months it was a barrier to further digging. Miners combated this problem by building fires to soften the ground to a depth of about 14 inches, then remove the gravel. This process was repeated until gold was reached. In the summer, water would be used to sluice the dirt, separating gold from gravel. Miners constructed sluices, which were wooden boxes 15 feet long through which dirt would be washed. The resulting gold dust could be traded in for paper money or bartered with. Mining in the Klondike took a significant additional capital investment, but the advantage was that in this region, gold was often highly concentrated, up to 15 times richer than comparative creeks in California. For instance, one claim on the El Dorado Creek brought up $6.4 million worth of gold in just two years. The mass migration of prospectors caused the formation of boom towns along the route of the gold rush, with Dawson City being the largest. Many of the towns were crowded and chaotic, with some developing a criminal underworld. Skagway, one of the towns on the Alaskan coast that was a launching point for overland routes to the Yukon, was essentially lawless, 
dominated by drinking and gunfire. Gambling and dance halls sprung up as successful miners spent greatly. Logistics also proved to be challenging. The extreme remoteness of Dawson City was a problem for the food supply. When the rivers iced over, it was realized that there wouldn't be enough food for the winter of 1897. During that winter, salt became worth its weight in gold, nails rose to a price of $784 per pound, and fresh apples arriving in the spring of 1898 sold for $28 each. Scurvy was a major problem due to a lack of fresh food. The gold rush faltered from late 1898 on. The problems began in 1898 when many of the prospectors coming to Dawson City found themselves unable to make a living and left. Additionally, the Spanish-American War took press coverage away from the Klondike. The final reason was the discovery of gold in other locations in Canada and Alaska, which created new stampedes directed away from the Klondike. During the winter of 1898, large quantities of gold were found at Nome, Alaska, which took many of the prospectors away from the Klondike. The gold rush had a significant impact on the native people of the region. Some tribes prospered in the short term from workers' guides and by selling food and supplies to the prospectors. However, they suffered in the long term from damage on the rivers and forests caused by gold mining. The situation became so dire for the Han people of the region, whose fishing and hunting grounds were almost all destroyed by the gold rush, that they needed aid from the Canadian police to prevent famine. An important cultural impact of the gold rush was in the works of Jack London, who was a stampeder in 1897. He included scenes from the gold rush in his works and had stories set in the Klondike, including one of his most famous books, The Call of the Wild.